the many ways you or a friend stinks and what to do about it naturally. So you can um, get rid of all that Glade plugins, all your sprays, all those chemicals, because those stink too. Or you can keep them if you want to keep getting migraines, keep your asthma, keep your allergies, keep your acute sinusitis. And if you want to uh, repel sensitive people like myself, like I will never visit your house if you have that Glade stuff, like I can't breathe. You got to get rid of that stuff. There are natural ways to make your house smell amazing, like a million times better than it's ever smelled um, without incense, without smoke. And I'm about to tell you how. I'm going to start with the... Um, with the sexy stuff or not so sexy stuff because this video follows uh, how to have cosmic sex. And um, so I'm going to start with that. You should not be putting any chemicals on your private parts. And you should definitely get checked if you have any odor coming from your JJ. If it smells like fish, you have an infection. So you probably need antibiotics. I know that's not a natural solution. You can try taking uh, an Epsom salt bath or sea salt bath, get a turkey baster and uh, douche yourself with salt water. But if you have a recurring odor, you probably need antibiotics or um, the like yeast infection medication if it's a yeast thing. That, I'm not gonna cover that topic because I don't really deal with that but try the salt water solution. If that doesn't work, see a doctor for other solutions. It's important that you sh shouldn't have any odor down there, really. It should smell like the JJ, not like fish, not like something disgusting. Okay, so make sure you're smelling clean down there. Um, it's an orifice, so in the shower, you can use your finger like a toothbrush and just stick it up there and get out any any gunk, if there is any, if you're a gunky girl, make it ungunky. And guys, if you're, you're not um, trimmed, if, if you're not circumcised, you have smegma under your foreskin. You have to clean that with just water at least once a day or whenever you see any smegma there, clean that with water. If, um, you, you know, everybody goes number two in the bathroom, you should wash after each time you do that. If you don't have time, you know, and you don't have a, a what do you call it, a bidet, uh, you can put some water in a squirt bottle and squirt your butt or go in the shower and shower it. Uh, water is usually enough unless uh, you're super messy, then use some soap. But if you use soap on your butthole, make sure you rinse that off really well because you don't want to have soap residue. And... Um, like soap residue on the skin can cause a rash. It makes very itchy skin. If you have kids and they have this mysterious rash on their butt, consider when you take them out of the bubble bath, you're rinsing them on top, but maybe not the bottom. Make sure you rinse off all the soap. So soap residue makes itchy stuff. Um, if you have, you know, when you flush the toilet, it's like, it's kind of like sneezing. The particles go everywhere. So a simple trick is put the lid down before you flush. So that way the poop particles aren't going to end up all over your house. Um, the product Poopery works really well, but it's, sometimes it's hard to spray downwards and at the last minute. I found um, just a, an essential oil, like citronella essential oil, a few drops behind your butt. It entraps the odor. That and putting uh, the lid over it. There's no smell. It smells like lemons. Um, what else? Uh, you could light a candle while you're going and blow out the candle after. That'll make a little bit of smoke though. You could light incense, you could light a match. But throw out that Glade chemical stuff, that Lysol stuff, it is toxic. It causes cancer, it causes migraines, it causes allergies. Don't use the chemical stuff, man. Okay, uh, deodorants. You don't want to use chemical deodorants. You're trying to find something that works for your armpits. I found some great products. Living Libations makes some essential oil deodorants. I find the most potent one is their Radiant Earth. Radiant Earth Poetic Pits. How do I put 
this on the camera. Can you see that? Okay, Radiant Earth Poetic Pits. Just look up Living Libations. I'll leave the link in the description. And Ginger Lily is pretty strong too. The other ones I find are pretty ineffective and are even more likely to cause a rash in your armpits. The deal with these is less is more and don't put them on anywhere near the outside part of your armpit. Just do one little swipe on the inside portion of your armpit and it'll keep you fresh smelling all day. Like you'll smell amazing. It's like wearing a natural perfume. If uh, you're super sensitive to essential oils and don't even want to risk trying that, again, less is more. Uh, this company, Vuquo, it used to be called Melly Corporation. It is a natural uh, charcoal deodorant. And you literally need like, not even a pea size, like half of a pea size amount. It's like this little paste. Less is more. If you put on too much, it might make you sweat. And it, oh, it smells, uh, smells good. It smells a little bit minty. Um, this stuff also works. But uh, I prefer that Radiant Earth Living Libations. It's like got some patchouli and lemon and cardamom, vetiver, like fantasticness. And uh, it's actually a guy's one. That's why I'll like mix it with the ginger lily and make it more feminine. It's really, really good. Um, so you can throw out your um, like alum thing that doesn't work and all those other deodorants and the plastic things that don't work. These are a bit pricey, but I've had these no joke for over a year. Like they, they last forever. Um, what else? Um, your breath. If, uh, if someone's breath stinks, tell them, you know, they appreciate it. It's like telling someone when they have some food stuck in their teeth, like don't just look at them and smile. If someone always has good breath, they're, you know, they could have a tooth problem. They could be totally unaware that they have bad breath. So if you tell them they have bad breath and like they can't believe it because they have really good oral hygiene, it may be indicative that they have a cavity and they need to go to the dentist. So um, always tell someone if their breath stinks. And if you do have a cavity and you're waiting to go to the dentist, get some clove oil or myrrh oil. That'll take the stink away. It'll numb the tooth and kill a bunch of the bacteria. For natural um, oral hygiene, uh, oil pulling works amazing. You can use any oil in your kitchen. A lot of people like coconut oil the best. Um, the, the best breath smelling person I ever had was, uh, was my yogi that would come over and he oil pulled every day religiously for like 20 minutes swishing that oil. And his breath was like the least offensive breath I've ever smelled in my life. He's like baby breath. It's also really um, comforting on the gums. You can make your own toothpaste with super easily. With just put in a jar some uh, some coconut oil, a couple drops of an essential oil of your choice. You know you can get creative. Do like a mint and myrrh. Or uh, if you're using cinnamon, be careful. Cinnamon is like fire in the mouth. It's very potent, like oregano oil. Be careful with those. Um, but you can do like a anise seed or. A, you can just get an, an essential oil like uh, mastic, it's called Pistachia lenticus, and you can just drop some essential oil on your toothbrush and brush with the essential oil. Um, I find if you use a medium strength toothbrush, it cleans a lot better than a soft toothbrush. But if you're worried about the enamel on your teeth, just focus more on the gum line and, and your back teeth. And um, I'm telling you, like I got my teeth cleaned for the first time in so many years, like a ridiculous amount of years, and they said, you don't even need a teeth cleaning. If everybody cleaned your teeth like you, we'd be out of business. I use a medium head. I, I want to have that dentist clean feel after every time I brush my teeth. So if you feel you have stuff on your teeth, you know, it's probably because you're using Tom's toothpaste. That stuff sucks. Just like throw it out. It's just like sodium lauryl sulfate bubbles in your mouth that don't really clean. Um, if you're too lazy to make your own with um, olive oil, essential oils, you could add a pinch of pink salt for minerals so your teeth will rebuild their enamel um, or a bit of baking soda. So if you don't, don't want to make your own toothpaste mix like that, and you could also look online for other ideas of making your own toothpaste, um, what I suggest that's a good product to buy is Jason brand. I keep this around for guests. I really prefer the homemade version with coconut oil. 
something about coconut oil on the teeth and gums is really um, comforting, it's soft. Um, you could also get a tooth powder. This is based on the Edgar Casey readings. I've had this for years. They, they last forever, the tooth powders. You just put up some powder in your mouth and brush with that. Um, I find it works so much better than most toothpaste out there. But if you're gonna go with a company, I find uh, Jason and Green Beaver are the best. I'm not affiliated with anything I'm recommending. Um, if you have gingivitis and like a really like, you know, eesh mouth, like work on getting in the habit of oil pulling, but it really works. And, uh, you know, Listerine Gold is based on thyme oil. So there is something natural about this, but like the original, not the mint with the stupid mint sugar in it and not the fake Listerine uh, generic brand. Something about Listerine Gold will kill everything in your mouth. And you don't even have to swish for the full minutes. So if you have like a really nasty mouth that burns a lot, just like swish it for like as long as you can, you know? and work your way up. If your gums are bleeding, you floss. Like the flossing on bleeding gums strengthens them and gets them to stop bleeding. It's counterintuitive, but it's true. It's like your gums are like little muscles and they, they need some, um, they, they, they need some pressure on there. You gotta floss. Fine, if you're, if you're using a floss, don't use a floss with like uh, waxy, sugary, minty stuff on it because like you're just leaving gross stuff in between your teeth that's like a so-called natural flavor that's not so natural. If you want a flavor in your toothpaste, you just uh, in, in your floss, I mean, you can open up the floss and you can put a couple drops of mint essential oil or cardamom essential oil or anise seed essential oil and then it's a treat, it's like dessert to floss your teeth. It's fun, it's tasty. Another trick is, um, like I like Oral-B Essential Floss because it doesn't leave disgusting wax coating anywhere. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. And if you have like different size spaces in between your teeth, try doubling it or quadrupling it to get in like, I didn't pull a long enough piece, but if you make it much thicker to get in the thicker spaces in the teeth, it's better at getting stuff out from between your teeth. And remember to go below the gum line, you know, like ask your dental hygienist. Like it's detail work cleaning your mouth. Get in every angle, get the stuff out because it's like disgusting to have a piece of food rotting in your mouth, a piece of meat, it stinks. And this is a video on the many ways you stink and what to do about it naturally. So floss, you know, make that a habit. You should floss like at least twice a day. Floss after each meal, like, come on. Okay, clothing. Stop using your gain, your tide, your bounce. That stuff stinks. Like, I don't wanna hug you if you, your clothes smell like chemicals. So it'll just like immediately go in my nose and like flare it up. It's like toxic, carcinogenic, nasty stuff. So how do you make your clothes smell good if you're using like um, an unscented, uh, you know, biodegradable detergent that isn't gain. You can have like a lightly scented uh, detergent if you're not that sensitive, it's not gonna be too powerful. But I find Tide and Gain are like horrible. They're like way too potent. And any dryer sheet, nasty, nasty. Um, so switch to like a, a biodegradable, unscented or lightly scented other brand where you get a better value anyway. Instead of dryer sheets, use uh, wool dryer balls and that way your clothes won't be wrinkled. And you could put like lavender essential oil. Lavender is traditional for clothing because like it comes from the word laver in French, that means clean, lavender. So people would put it in their baths. It's like a clean kind of smell, but you can put whatever essential oil of your choice in the dryer balls and it will make your clothes smell like that. It's a bit tedious because you kind of have to do it every time or every second time. So what's better to make your clothes smell good is uh, put some lavender sachets in your drawers or um, some orange peels and cinnamon if you don't like the smell of lavender or just some bars of soap instead of keeping them in the cupboard if you have a strong smelling soap that's scented with natural essential oils and you put those bars of soap in your, in your clothing drawers and your clothing will smell nice and fresh like that soap. Um, what else? Uh, you could also make a linen spray um, with just water and essential oils. If it's a dry clean only kind of deal, then you want to use a grain alcohol. Don't use 
ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol because that kind of alcohol stinks but you can um, get like a grain alcohol high proof from the um, liquor store or vodka and mix that with some essential oils of your choice uh, do a little test spot like don't like don't do like a thick spray you want a mist and you can you know get out wrinkles like that and have it smell great and amazing um, if you are uh, eat a lot of garlic and you're burping that stuff up and gum isn't really doing anything because it's coming from your esophagus and your stomach uh, what you could do is take some olive oil and a couple drops of mint essential oil and swallow that and when you burp you will burp up mint uh, you could add a little chlorophyll for extra extra scent um killingness like chlorophyll just kills scent it's like what they put in the they have that gum that's dark green this this is the active ingredient chlorophyll chlorophyll works um internally i also if you have like really stinky bo or toxic sewage farts like you are just like nasty from the inside you really want to get your hands on some chlorophyll and uh you can make the water like like you can put like a little dropper amount to make it a light green color if you're not so bad and take it chlorophyll is super safe to use in moderation so moderate amounts don't overdo it or it could cause gastrointestinal upset and always um, take with plenty of water and this will get rid of all kinds of body odor throughout your whole body. Just remember to not overdo it or um, you could have some gastrointestinal upset. So moderation is always the key and lots of water to go with it and drink that and um, your poop will come out green and it won't smell and you will clean that toxic sewage thing that you have going also like watch with all the spices you eat you know i've had some clients where their bo smells exactly like falafel like it smells like food it doesn't even smell like bo so like the f whatever you eat it comes out of your armpits it does so if you're eating like lots of that kind of food, again, get chlorophyll. Like chlorophyll is the answer for a lot of stuff. Um, it's copper chlorophyll and complex, and there's a balance in your body between zinc and chlorophyll. So make sure you're taking your zinc too. And if you're overloaded on copper, you, you don't want to take that regularly. Just take it when you really stink because you don't want to have copper overload. The signs of copper overload are like lots of acne and anxiety and um, hair falling out and you can Google the signs of copper overload. Um, anyway, zinc is the remedy for that. They, they work on like a seesaw basis. So how to make your house smell amazing without incense or sage, because those can make your house smell great. And if you're smoking up your house with stuff like that though, please open a window. Like fresh air is always the best for a great smelling house. If you want your house to smell like the forest and you live like in the city, I recommend getting a nebulizer like this. I got this one on Amazon, but Living Libations makes their own also, um, which I'm going to put the link to. A nebulizer, you just put essential oils in here, plug it in, and like it smells like the forest when it comes out. I, if you put in like fir needle and cedar leaf essential oil, just those two, not that expensive. Just put it all in, lasts a while. Your house will smell like the forest. Everybody will go, oh wow, your house smells amazing. Like as they're coming up the stairs, like it, it just, it travels, it smells wonderful. Um, if that's a little bit pricey for you, uh, oh, you gotta be careful with this, by the way. If you're getting, using a nebulizer with just essential oils, they can clog really easily and they're a pain in the ass to clean. I've broken a couple of them. So do not put orange essential oil, like any kind of orange, tangerine, blood orange, don't put that in a nebulizer because there's like orange particles and it will clog that. Don't put anything thick in there like vetiver or cedar wood. It, uh, even if you're mixing it with thinner essential oils, it'll clog your machine and then it gets a big pain to clean it. You have to use like, like tongs because you have to use really, really hot water with soap. Soak it for like forever. So yeah, just avoid that. I find uh, if to make it smell like the forest, 
fir needle and cedar leaf. You could add pine, you could add spruce. Uh, those are a bit more expensive. Cedar leaf is a bit more expensive, but you need way less. It's really potent. And fir needle is not that expensive. And you get a house smelling like the forest. It's amazing. In the bathroom, I mix bergamot, uh, grapefruit, and petit grain. And it's like really lovely. Um, so you can get creative with essential oils that you mix, uh, become your own perfumer. It is like, it's great if, if you like cooking and you like smelling as you go, you'll probably be a great like natural perfumer with essential oils. You, know, you have a talent for it probably if you can cook. What else? If you smoke cigarettes and uh, you don't want to stop because you could stop if you wanted to stop, you know, but most people who smoke cigarettes, they don't want to stop and um, it's cold and you're smoking in the house and uh, it's like disgusting. Um, definitely always open a window, but it, I'm telling you, if you switch to organic tobacco in, um, in Eastern Canada, there's two kinds, Northfield Organic and CNT Tobacco, or you can go to the Native Reserve and they have some organic tobacco. Just make sure it's organic. It smells way, way less. And if you roll them in like natural hemp paper, they won't burn as fast. And um, it, it just takes away a lot of the regular cigarette smell to make it way less offensive. It'll still be offensive to someone who doesn't smoke, but it's like a million times less offensive. And if you put a couple um, or a few like lavender pieces inside the tobacco, it, it doesn't taste weird. It doesn't taste like a flavored cigarette so much, but it, really cuts out the smell of the tobacco so the lavender like will clean the smell and you could get like um again you can make a spray like like this get a spray bottle fill it with water and some essential oils shake it up and spray that and it makes it rain uh essential oils and water and rain water it just cleans the air and um you could smoke a cigarette like two minutes before, open the window, spray that stuff, and no one will ever know that you smoked your organic tobacco. I don't know if that will cover the smell of like uh, Marlboro or like disgusting chemical cigarettes though, because that is like disgusting. You shouldn't be smoking chemicals, you know? Um, if you're like really like your tobacco, go organic, have respect for the plant and don't abuse it and keep your air clean. Um, do I have any other information for you today? Oh yeah, if you have like athlete's foot, some stink foot going on, God, you want to like attack that with a variety of things because those are like tenacious like infections, those fungal infections. That stink foot's not good. So you can try oregano essential oil. It's like super strong and burning usually on the skin, but the bottoms of your feet have thicker skin. So... You like you can put like a few drops of oregano essential oil, lemon essential oil. Um, I don't know if they're all like cut up and you're afraid it's like it'll be too strong. Try like an apple cider vinegar soak for like 10 minutes. So soak it in salt water the next day. Soak it in some alcohol the day after that. Soak it in um, different essential oils. I'm telling you. Try spikenard. It was good enough for Mary to rub in Jesus's feet. Spikenard, it's hard to find. Uh, Zayat Aroma has, has some. Like if you're going to go get essential oils, make sure they are the real deal, therapeutic essential oils. Not like most of the stuff on Amazon, if it's like a lot cheaper than everywhere else, it's probably not real. It's probably cut with other things as stuff that would clog your nebulizer. Um, oh yeah, about the nebulizer too. If you um, If this is too pricey for you, they have cheaper cool mist diffusers you can find at your pharmacy where you mix water with the essential oil. And in those things, you can put the thicker essential oils like orange and cedarwood and vetiver. But um, if, uh, if you're really sensitive to, um, to scents, you think, it's probably the citrus ones. Citrus ones in particular, especially cigarette smokers, because it, it's an expectorant, so it may make you cough. So if you're a cigarette smoker or have coffee lungs, coughing all the time, you might want to avoid the lemon orange citruses, because citruses are more, <clears throat> they're, they're more, um, I guess, abrasive on the lungs. 
mint be very careful with mint is super strong so if you're making a mix and it's not strong enough you can add just a few drops of mint and it will make it much stronger same with cinnamon cinnamon be really careful it's super strong but if your mix isn't strong enough to, to make your house smell great try adding just a few drops of cinnamon cinnamon leaf or cinnamon bark and it will make it much more potent um what else hmm I think that's all I have for you today. So remember, if you stink, there's natural solutions. Get rid of the chemicals. And if someone you know stinks, help them out with some of these solutions. Okay, have a great day. One more thing. If your personality stinks, man, that's the stinkiest, or the personality of a friend. How to fix that naturally? Well, if you're Pointing your finger at other people all the time. There's three fingers pointing back at you. One, two, three. So usually when you're fucking stinking up everybody's face, nah, 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 you know, do some shadow work and figure out what it is that you can't stand so much about your perceived environment or about them while you're complaining all the time. You know, it's probably something within you that really you can't stand. So you got to meditate on that. You got to do the shadow work, face your shadow. Maybe it's something um, your parents did that you don't like that you're projecting out on other people. Get to the bottom of it. You can uh, get a healer to help you with that or do that all on your own. Journaling can help. Um, but self-examination is the antidote to a stinky personality. If people don't like you and if other people's personalities stink, the antidote is just... Put up your boundaries and get away from them. Just don't engage with stinky personality people and don't accept their stink, okay? The stinky personalities are the stinkiest. That's not good. Shadow work, boundaries, that's the answer. Bye.